these guys are at 67%. Weirman, a first team All American in 2022. And we are underway from South Bend. Loose ball picked up by the Irish in the middle of the field. We'll get a chance to see Notre Dame 6v6 first. Lynch still has it, finally able to get rid of it. And he gets it to the attackman, Jake Taylor. The big boy matchup here, Ajax Zapatello, one in red for Maryland, has been a complete eraser this season after four games, owning every matchup. He goes against Pat Cavanaugh. For the Irish, Jordan Faison with the ball in his cross, 14, the football player. You can see the football team on the far berm. Whenever it goes into 14 stick, you're going to hear a loud cheer from that crew. Kavanaugh comes up field, and you see Zap all over him, one in red. Such a technician, one in red. Rarely overextends his body positioning. is off the charts. Shot wide of the cage by Jake Taylor. Here's the matchup. Best on best. Still 21 to shoot for the Irish, so plenty of time for Kavanaugh to set something up. Slides over the top of a pick. Looks for room, doesn't have it, but finds face on it. Bounces one wide. You see the football team yeah. there. When the wide receiver, he's not just an ordinary player for the football team. He was the Sun Bowl MVP, the freshman wideout. Scored three goals in his first game of his career for Kevin Corrigan in the Irish against Cleveland State. So he is a dominant player for both teams. There's the football squad over on the berm. Huge crowd today at Arlotta. They're going to reset the shot clock to 60. So break for Notre Dame. Kavanaugh doesn't need it, though, as he takes a shot at McDade. He makes his first save of the day. You can see the Notre Dame ride relentless as Maryland is able to clear it. And we'll see Maryland offensively for the first time. Yeah, Notre Dame will ride incredibly hard because it creates scramble plays. They're best in chaos. Chorus now forced behind the cage. Do it all, 22 in red. A conversation with Coach Tillman this week had all kinds of praise for 22. He's kind of a Swiss Army knife, jack of all trades, can do it all. Here's Spanos coming off a hat trick last week. Over to Maltz. As he works behind the cage to X. Marco Napolitano, the veteran, 30 in white, checking him. Back up top to Eric Spanos. This is Chorus with a swim dodge. Skip pass, now the extra up top. Good ball movement for Maryland. Can't find an open shot, though. Stays on the Maryland side of the field with 18 to shoot. Erksa shoots, bounces it high. Just five to shoot for the Terps. And they may just put this one in the corner, and they do. And that gets the, the bench for Notre Dame fired up. Yeah, you see Ryan Wellner, defensive coordinator. He was rallying the troops pregame. When you stop an offense like Maryland, when you watch them on tape, they move the ball as fast as any team in the country. You saw it there for sure. That's an unforced error right there, a turnover. You get an offside, though, against uh, Maryland, rather, so it's a break. Goes back to Notre Dame. It looked like Daniel Maltz, 37 in red, might have gone over the line there. He's an attackman. You have to have three on that side. Second midfield unit for Notre Dame. They'll get a lot of run. You'll see Riley Gray, Jalen Seymour, players like Bryce Walker get a lot of time. Will Angrick here with the ball in his cross, 10. The Irish are deep in the middle of the field. Chris Cavanaugh working on Jackson Canfield, the transfer from Vermont. Maryland's got three of those players, and they've all contributed this year significantly in the first four games. Seymour shoots too high. You know, one thing that's interesting about Logan McNaney, when you watch him as a goaltender, his hands are so soft, he rarely lets up rebounds. And he's going to have to kind of follow that suit today because this is a team that's great against rebounds. Chris Cavanaugh gets the shot off as he had defenders draped all over him. If you allow rebounds against Notre Dame, 
Jake Taylor comes to the party. He picks up all the trash inside. The Kavanaugh's a relentless going for second chance opportunity. So McNaney has to be consistent in terms of making clean saves. Kavanaugh on Zapatello. Tough angle. Wasn't able to get the shot off. Now back up top. Seymour. On inside a 10 to shoot for Gray. Jump shot high up into the air. And Kavanaugh just let that shot clock run out. Zapatelli run, won the uh, charge of the ball on the end line. Yeah, these defenses are no joke. Jesse Bernhardt, John Tillman's defensive coordinator. Watch out here. Brennan shoots. That one got a piece of the pipe as Ensman was forced to go way high on that one. It's not, not hard for Ensman. He's a big dude. 6'3", 200-pound, graduate student, consensus All-American in net for the Irish. Plays that wide base, too. Very little net to look at if you're an opposing offensive player. Brennan working on the defense. Now double team comes. Switch up. Now they got a long pole on him. Over here to the near side. That's Kelly, 45, sometimes runs out of the box, sometimes plays attack. Murphy, big-time shooter, 55 in red. Two-man game up top with Brennan. Murphy gets it back. Still 30 seconds to shoot. Back behind the cage to Molliver. Got his hands free just a little bit. Now back to his right. Shoots it wide. Molliver has the short stick on him because of the switch. Four and red. I think he has more time to, to manipulate that dodge rather than rush into that high question mark a little too far from the cage there. Get to the body. Win the leverage game against the shorty. Murphy trying to dodge on the shorty. Speaking of which, here's Maltz. Shot wide. Both teams off target a bit in the early going today. On what is a gorgeous day in South Bend. Very uncharacteristic for March 3rd. It's like May 3rd. This crowd's incredible. The full house. Packed house. Berm is loaded. Football team's out. Wanted to see their Irish rebound from last week's loss. That'll help. Paul gets across the goal line, though. Initially, Entman made the save, but Maltz had just enough English on it to get by Entman. Terps up early. The book on Daniel Maltz. He's an inside finisher. But be very careful. He's one of the most underrated Dodgers because he gets a short stick a lot of times because they feel they can take a pole and put it up at the midfield. Concerned with more dodging threats. But Daniel Maltz has some really good shake and change of direction and low angle shooting ability. His father, Derek, played at Syracuse. His older brother, Derek, was a Cuse lacrosse player as well. Daniel rocking the stash. You like that stash, Connor? I love that. I always love that. Can't forget about brother Dylan, too, won a championship right. with the Terps in 2017. Of course. That's why he's on the field 22. He can pick up ground balls and he can score, give you instant offense. Now Weirman's going to get rid of it. Jack Chorus is one of the most underrated players in the country. He's all over ground balls. You can put him on defensive shifts. He plays the wing on faceoffs. He's like kind of cut out of that Jake Stevens mold, who played right. at Princeton, now at Syracuse in a grad year. You saw him take a get a pick up a ground ball off a faceoff against Syracuse. They gave him a huge goal. Ball's on the ground. Big hit that time by the Irish. Taking the ball away from Syracuse. The issue when you have a guy like Chorus, he's so good at so many different things, you have to watch his mileage, right? Like, where is he most valuable for your team? Because he's he's a top three offensive midfielder. Right. He's a top three wing guy. Oh, you're not going to stop that at all, ever. Jay Taylor puts the Irish on the board. I play a half game or a half field game with the Terps. They are so sound in that realm defensively. You have to hit in transition, hit in chaos off of ground balls, and Notre Dame cashing in with automatic Jake Taylor. Lynch and Weirman now battling. The wings come in right on the ND logo. Picked up by the Irish. That's the bagpipe player, Bergmaster. 
Q last week, I did the game, the Georgetown game with Quint last week. He was very complimentary of Ross Bergmaster and off his bagpipe play. And oftentimes Q is way too critical. Has that guy ever played a musical instrument in his life? <laughs> oh, no way. And, and he's critiquing right. guys on the bagpipe. I know. He played the pan flute like Zamfir. Is that what your, our uh, producer, John Kettering, is telling me at some point? Influenced by some of the greats? Yeah, Bergmaster does a great job on the bagpipes, leading the Irish out. Here's face on, right? Yeah, face on. Look at him get in the middle of the field. Look at the athleticism, and he oh. whistles it wide. That would have sent the berm into a frenzy. It's the gliding change of direction, right? Like, you can't teach those feet. He's a slot receiver for the football team, so he's great at maneuvering inside quickly. Now over to the far side of Pat Cavanaugh. Both of these teams will set about a million picks today. Cavanaugh trying to get loose on one. He's going over the shoulder, and he scores! Wow. Ho, oh, ho, ho, ho. years ago his first game back from the knee injury scored eight goals on this field like who is this guy jay taylor the jay taylor i knew was the old washed up catcher in the movie major league <laughs> well good thing for a guy like taylor coming off a knee injury and logan mcnaney who had an acl injury in 2023 he's back when you ask a guy to, to stay in about an eight yard radius it helps and taylor just occupies the middle of the irish offense you're not asking him to run around a lot you're not asking him to move. You're asking him to finish, and his hands are gold. Turnover against Maryland. So they weren't able to get into that offense. We really weren't able to see the Terps with that good ball movement. And we go the other way. And you'll see a relentless ride by Notre Dame. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little softer in terms of Maryland because they don't want to play in that, that gray area. They don't want to play in chaos. They'd rather play in six on six. And you know what? That softer ride could fuse Notre Dame a little bit. They couldn't get the ball across the midfield line before 60 seconds, and that's a turnover. Got to get the ball across. Once you gain possession in your defensive end, got to get it across midfield by the time the shot clock hits 60 seconds. Notre Dame wasn't able to do that. So Irksa. So the soft ride is twofold, right? You force them to play a little bit more of an elongated clearing game, but also you want to play six on six against the Irish. Zach Whittier now inverted 13. Murphy's got a big shot. Edson was up to it. I, I don't like that shot against the reigning national goaltender of the year. Owen Murphy can sling it with two hands, but 55 and red has to challenge Gentleman better than that. Stick side on a goalie with this kind of pause and experience, no dice. So Ben Ramsey brings the ball into the offensive end. D-Mitty, he'll sub out. Watch his mileage. Last week against Georgetown, he was on the field a ton. Yeah, 24 and white. Yeah, one of the better short stick defensive midfielders in the country. <laughs> Only so many reps he can handle. Face on. Pulling face on with McDonald, at least on this trip down the field. Chris Cavanaugh gets a pick. Can't get free, though, as Canfield does a really nice job making up ground. Right-handed shot that time by Dobson. Dobson's got a lefty hammer. But he's showing he can shoot it with the right as well. I thought last year that really opened up his game. He, he was going to the rack in the semifinals against Virginia with the right hand quite a bit. And when you're dealing with a six-foot-five guy who shoots with both hands... Matchup nightmare. Kavanaugh up top. Now he got in his left. Gets it to Taylor instead. Tough angle scores anyways. Can spun off of the pressure and still score with virtually no angle. Lynch and Weirman have been even at two face-offs apiece. We'll get a loose ball hole. It's going to go against the Irish. Drought for Maryland right now. Syracuse and company looking to change that. Erksa. Maltz down the alley. 
Skip pass really high, but Erksa can't quite control it at first. Now trying to track it down. That was a really nice yeah, job. That was smart a, play. A smart goose right there. Knew we had a teammate coming for help down in the corner. Below GLE. Now Molliver. Try to get it to Erksa. If that pass goes, Erksa's going to have a great scoring opportunity, but he can't reel it in. Erksa is being defended by Sean Light, a freshman, 6'3, 200 pounds. This is his biggest matchup to date in terms of a true number one attackman. Only a freshman light. His athleticism, his body control, he will be one of the premier defenders in the entire country in the coming years. But today he's got the matchup with Erksa, who's got a, a full year under his belt, who is not shy to attack any matchup. That's one to watch. Kavanaugh, look at how does he keep the possession on that play? Gets it to his brother, fires it high. We've seen the repertoire from Pat Kavanaugh today. We've seen what Jake Taylor can do. 55-0 in white. Coming off a rough game against Georgetown. Had just the one goal late in that game. I think we're all kind of waiting on him to explode as well now. Maybe next. Nice def job defensively by the Terps. Picked that ball off in midair, and we're going to go the other way. But there's that ride again. The relentless Notre Dame ride gets possession back. Now will they try to attack quickly? Now they'll hold it back. Even if you can't attack quickly, you're going after a defense that just played a full set, right? So now you're going after a tired defense and you have some substitutes like Riley Gray with fresh legs. And the disappointment and exasperation, the fact that you just made a great defensive play to get the ball back, and you've given it right back to the Irish with a full 60, full 80, rather. Bounce shot high because they still have 44 left on this shot clock, so they can work this down and really tire out this defense. Kavanaugh coming up field. See Maryland threaten the slide. Now we get the flag as he took a slash to the hip, so a delayed call against Maryland. Kavanaugh sold that one well. Seymour wasn't going to wait for the whistle. He took the shot high, and now we'll get the call. That was Will Schaller, 27 in red. Thought he played really strong body positioning. We'll see the check. One minute slash and call. Notre Dame will be man up. Let's check out the ride. Relentless. Maryland could clear the ball, 92% coming into this game, but this is a different beast when you're dealing with Notre Dame. There's the push. That's fine right there. It's hard to tell. I, I, honestly, the sell didn't hurt. Right. You got to sell it. Why not sell it? Now you're a man up, and this is a deadly, deadly man up. Both these teams have been deadly man up all year. Yeah, Notre Dame's 5 for 7. Oh. 71% because you have everything. You have the outside shooter and Dobson inside with Taylor. Feeders with the Kavanaugh's. And you bring in Jeff Richardelli, who's amazing inside as well. He's just camped right on the doorstep, zero and white. That's how you do it right there. Just get it right into 13 inside. Already the hat trick for Jake Taylor. And Dobson doesn't get the shot. You made the point. Jeffrey Richardelli is on that back side left spot to Logan McNaney. He's almost automatic when he catches the right. ball. Colin Hagstrom took that draw for Notre Dame. And he wins possession and we get a timeout. So the Irish, clearly, Clark, when you think about what happened on this field last week when they lost to Georgetown, the disappointment, the number one team in the country going down, and the tough week of practice we know they had because we talked to Corrigan and the assistant coaches this week. Coming out in this first quarter, I would say mission accomplished for the Irish. As I said earlier, they're embracing chaos. The feed inside, just Taylor couldn't handle that one, just a little bit too high. And now here come Maryland. He's got numbers here. Erksa from the far wing hits the pipe. And he'll chase after it to keep possession. So now Maryland will have the benefit of the rest of this clock for the first quarter if they choose. Erksa looks like he wants to go to the tin, though. Back to his right. Shoots. That, if that went, that would have been unbelievable. Losing his balance and falling backward. 
Yeah, he gets hit a lot, too. I saw him take a hit by Billy Dwan oh, in the Syracuse dome a few game. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, like, he is not scared to go in traffic. Here's Molliver. Got a shorty on him now from X. He'll shoot, score! His eyes must have gotten wide open when he saw that shorty on him, Kark, and he came upfield and took that extra step to greatness. This is a brilliant shot by Eric Molliver. Terp Nation feels it. Do you remember he had the shorty earlier and how far out he was? I said he needs to get closer to the goal, win a little bit more of the leverage game. Here's the pipe. Beautiful location. Unlucky by the sophomore, Irksa. Little stutter step get into the body and as he gets into the body once he feels the pressure from Dobson kind of relieved that's when he knows he can get that shot off yeah because of that fast break that Maryland had Dobson was stuck on the field yep. too after a long shift Dobson had been out there a while you know Molliver saw that and yeah, said I'm the, taking it yep. right, right to the rack yep Notre Dame scrambled to, to match up in the the matchup on an attackman and Eric Molliver Lynch, good face-off win again. 20 seconds to see if the Irish can put something quickly together. Entman knows it as he runs up to catch the pass. Irish trying to get the ball again. That, that sloughing back Maryland on that ride is causing problems, but here we go with Notre Dame. Taylor's going to take a long shot, long shot right before the buzzer. And McEnany... Steps up and makes the stop. So action right to the very end of the quarter. But the Irish bouncing back from that loss to Georgetown here on this field last week. Gotten off to a great start. Four to two after one. The Terps are unbeaten coming in. They knew they'd get a test and they're getting Notre Dame's best. He is recruited as a lacrosse player to Notre Dame. And the football team saw his film and said, holy cow, we, we could really use this guy for sure. So he's on football scholarship, but playing for the lacrosse team, it's a win-win. Yeah, I think he could be an NFL slot receiver. I watched him play lacrosse in high school and just blown away by his speed in terms of his shiftiness. And he, he plays lacrosse like a slot receiver, just his in, his in and outs and, and the way that he manipulates a defense. He's got a younger brother down in Florida, too, who's kind of a carbon copy of him on the lacrosse field. <laughs> They're going to be lining up to get that kid. Face on getting rid of it to Pat Cavanaugh. Uses a pick. Got a step. Now rolls back. Good look inside. Scores. Oh, the creativity from 51 is coming out in every facet today. Weirman loses his footing, but is able to clamp down on the ball and come out of there with it. The Irish, just relentless, always in the middle of the field. And they almost thought they won possession, but it goes stays with Maryland. You know, last week I thought Eric Spanos against Princeton was fantastic. Seven in red. He's got about five inches on Will Donovan, who's a really legit long stick midfielder. But I think Spanos, with his attack background, should go against a shorty or a pole. Syracuse, good look in front. And Maryland gets one back. And it's Chorus. The officials talk about it on the crease. It's good. There's your Swiss Army knife right on the crease, Cart. Yep. You can play him anywhere. The biggest question is, where do you want to log his minutes? Because he's one of your better players anytime he's on the field. Ryan Syracuse, who's waited his time in College Park to be a regular offensively, is having a terrific senior year. And that ball crosses the goal line. It appeared prior to Chorus landing inside the crease, not the goal mouth, so that goal is good. Honestly, he's just another version of Jake Stevens. Weirman jumped the gun with the face-off violation. And I love those old-school midfielders. You know, they're the kind of guys that do everything. A lot of lacrosse camps at the end of games when there's ties, they have these, these games called Braveheart. You throw one of your best guys out there, and you, you face off, and you play offense, defense. It's one-on-one -on -one with a goalie in there. 
he's the kind of guy that you want out there because he can do everything. Right. You have to defend, he'll defend. You got to get a ground ball, he'll get a ground ball. You need to score, he'll score. The way the game used to be played. So they're giving that Dobson that right hand. They're giving him just a little bit, shading him obviously to the left. Face on shoots. That looks like it got a piece of the pipe. McNaney may have also gotten a piece of it as it flies way out of bounds, but Kavanaugh wins the race. See, when you have face on, too, he, he's, he has a pull right now on him. But then you have a short stick matched up against Dobson. So when you have two dodging threats like there, you only have four poles out there on the field, you're shorting Dobson right now. Zap comes around the pick. Back up top to face on. Yeah, you got to demand the ball here if you're Dobson. Dobson gets, he gets that right hand free. Now he wants to come back to his left. Gets a pass away. And McLean again. Point blank range, buries it past McNaney. Buries the corner, the opposite side on Logan McNaney. So beautiful awareness by Dobson. Incredible cut by McLean. Illegal clamp on the ball against Maryland. So once again, Notre Dame will get possession off the faceoff. Irish with the 8-3 advantage at the faceoff dot early. Lynch has really gotten off to a great start this year for the Irish. Chris Cavanaugh, full head of steam. Gets it back to Taylor. Taylor on the shorty. It's the outside of the cage. Time getting rid of it though. Chris Cavanaugh in front and he scores. Well, maybe that gets 5 0 going. A typical Cavanaugh goal. Junk it up, cause the turnover deep in Maryland zone zone, and 5 0 does the rest. Against Notre Dame, they thrive in chaos and they will score off the ride. Hagstrom, they will make you pay. Hagstrom now trying to take that draw. We'll get a procedure. Going to go against Notre Dame. It's the largest deficit Maryland has faced all year, Cart. You know, in a week of complete chaos with Notre Dame losing last week and Virginia losing yesterday and Duke on Friday, part of me thinking, like, Maryland, they kind of check every box for being a championship-type team, right? You maybe have the best face-off guy in the country. You have a proven winning generational type coach in John Tillman, an eraser in Ajax Zapatello, a goalie in Logan McNaney, who's a, a top two goalie in the country. You have all these pieces, but Notre Dame after last week, for their standards, not up to par. They are delivering a punch today. Brennan on the short stick. To Kelly near side. Back behind Erksa. White checking him. Not giving him an inch. All over his hands. Now back up top to Kelly. Maltz, no angle. Oliver inside behind the back. And Entzimann got a piece of it just enough. All class on that save from Entzimann. Now Harris and company brings it in the offensive end for the Irish. That's a goal on a lefty goalie, but not on a righty with the wingspan of Entzimann, who saves that stick side. Left side of your screen, Erksa catches the ball here. Doesn't have time to switch, goes behind the back. <laughs> Fitness. I think Erksa has to use his speed a little bit more in that light matchup. He's stopping his feet a little bit when he's dodging. I think he needs a straight line and just show his, his rocket fuel type speed. Now McLean out of the box. 40 seconds still to shoot for the Irish. Face on. On McDonald. Now we're going to get an illegal pick going against Maryland. Another mistake. Or against Notre Dame, rather. Here comes McDonald and the Terps. Face on's tracking him down from behind. Gets it to Oliver. Beautiful passing from Maryland, and they couldn't. Everything but the finish, and Aaron Kolar back in the game, getting some minutes. Good to see eight and red back in there. He's had to deal with some injuries. Yeah, that's a step down you want to can. 
Yeah, man, that's the opportunity because Notre Dame's six on stick has been stingy today. And you have an opportunity to strike and transition. Kolar, who you mentioned back in the lineup, I think the short stick defensive midfield unit for Maryland. A little nicked up coming into the season, but as the season progresses, I think it could be deep. They could run four or five guys, Kolar being one of them. Yeah, Kolar, Josh Kaufman coming back from injury as well, both getting some some time right now as they get close to 100%. Could pay big dividends to have a fresh rope unit like that second half of the season when you get into Big Ten play and beyond. Maryland jumped out to a one to nothing lead in this game and since then it has been almost entirely Notre Dame. Drake couldn't handle the low pass. McDaney scoops it up. Again here, issues with the Kavanaugh is relentless. Yeah, this is... I mean, here comes Chris. They take more pride in this than they do scoring goals. It's, it is full gas. And they can thank their brother, Matt, who set that standard when he arrived on campus about 10 years ago. And the pressure causes the turnover. Maryland had to force a pass because they were running out of time. Exactly. So they didn't directly affect the turnover, but indirectly they did because Maryland knows they have to clear it in 20 seconds. They get past the Kavanaugh's, but there's so little time left to get it over the midline, you throw a bad pass. Yes, panic ensues. It's the ninth turnover of the day for the Terps. We'll take a quick timeout. The Irish looking to rebound from last week's loss. They're doing it so far. 7-3, to three, Notre Dame on top. I mean, that statement is unique, Cotter, because this past week, the ACC took some haymakers. They really did. It's been a tough week for them, and this is a huge game for not only Notre Dame, but really for the conference as a whole. Got to get some signature out-of-conference wins. Yep. Every team in the past week lost to an out-of-conference team in the ACC. And You say 2022, and you're an ACC lacrosse fan. You want to run for the hills. Yes. But there's some meat on the bone. Let's, let's not overreact here in the first week of March. I know a lot of people are are trying to say it's a it's a two bit league now it's a three bit slow down i looked at all the schedules there's some meat on the ball yes lot there's everybody's got at least one or two really tough out of conference matchups so before you get into conference play you'll have an opportunity to up the rpi of your entire conference which you have to do before conference play but we'll talk more about that in the second half Beautiful job by Zapatello getting it away from Pat Kavanaugh. Do you see the patience on the check, too? Like he didn't overextend and reach. He just waited for Kavanaugh to kind of drop his stick and the timing, perfection. Molliver scores two on fast break. They just out Notre Dame, Notre Dame on that play. You have an eraser. Bonafide star, the defensive end wearing the legendary number one for Maryland. That's Ajax Zapatello. Could win the Schmeisser Award, nation's top defender. The trail check right there behind Pat Kavanaugh creates unsettled situations in Molliver. How about him? He's got two goals here. Both left-handed. This guy is about as two-handed as they come because he's a natural right-handed player that can go either way. And he scored lefty twice in this game. Coming back from an injury where not only he missed all of last year with the knee injury card, but he missed basically all of fall, Molliver did, and Ajax. Yeah, look at those numbers. You get the top matchup every single week. These guys put up video game type numbers. Dalton Young, well, erased. Evan James, erased. Joey you Spelina, erased. You see Magnussy on Magnussy. Friday. Five goals on Friday against Princeton. Or Princeton against North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. Well, he scored one against Ajax. And they're all shooting under 18%. So even when they get opportunities, Connor, they're in poor spots because of his positioning, the way he, he flushes attackmen out. Loose ball push against the Irish. Weirman still out there for Maryland. He'll check out here as he gets it to Spanos. Maryland looking for a little momentum here in the latter part of the second quarter.
course inside. As Maltz now back up top to Spanos. Siragusa on the far side. Spins back to his right. Here's Molliver. Two goals today, as we just saw, playing with a lot of confidence. Spanos on the shorty. Trying to go back to his right. Still plenty of time to shoot for Maryland. Herxa thought about behind the back there. Instead, he got it back to Syracusa. Spanos nowhere to go with it. Good defense by Notre Dame on this possession. Syracusa shoots, scores! Looked like Edsman might have been screened on that play, Kark. I don't know if he got a good look at it. Look how compact this Notre Dame defense is. And kudos to Maryland for being so patient offensively. You know, I thought maybe Spano 7 in red was going to attack that short stick and, and maybe continue with that dodge, but he has the awareness to spin it with Syracusa. And Notre Dame defensively is not pressed out enough. This is way too much of a cushion. He's shooting this without pressure from about 10. If you're a defensive midfielder, you need to get in the gloves, the body and the hips of an offensive player there. I don't care who your goalie is. So he's the MVP of the national championship game a year ago, and he's a first-team All-American. You need to support your goalie a little bit more and contest the shot there. That time, Weirman got the better of Hagstrom, took that draw for the Irish. Turnover again in the middle of the field. Chris Cavanaugh with it. That can't happen. That wasn't even a pressure ride for Notre Dame. If you're Maryland, you have to cleanly clear the ball. And they're one of the best clearing teams in the country at 92%. Not today. They have had some issues today. Give credit to Notre Dame in many cases for that. Seymour to the middle of the field. Two fifties in white and red going at it. Chris Cavanaugh going against Jackson Canfield. A little confusion off the pick and McNaney picks that one right off the turf. Yeah, those are the clean saves I'm talking about. Like no rebound. Great patience of McNaney, but can Maryland clear the ball? I mentioned earlier, 92% coming into this game. Six of 10 against the Irish. Brennan gets it over to Kolar. And a successful clear in that attempt. Sprints out. Murphy comes on. Parlette did a really nice job chasing Murphy, not letting him have an advantage. Murphy wants to dodge and shoot. Stays with Maryland. 29 to shoot. Erksa. Nice pick that time by Napolitano. Seen some really good defensive plays in the passing zones in this, so far in this game. That's just an example of stick in the right place in the passing lane. The anticipation. The KG vet Marco Napolitano, the fifth year senior from San Diego. on trying to go down the alley. Turnover goes back to Maryland. See Maryland, these last two clears successful, getting it out quicker, right? The more that you marinate on that side of the field, the more you allow the Kavanaugh's to chase after you and create 
serious chaos. Right, and it wastes time to make it where you have to make that perfect pass in the middle of the field later on in the shot clock. Oliver. Trying to work on Bergmaster. Help comes. Gets it up top. Turks got a shorty on him now. Spins to the middle of the field. Spanos trying the jump shot, but it's dislodged before he can get the shot off. There's Marco again. That is two incredible plays by 30 and White. Ramsey. Thought he had a shot. Now he gets it back to his right. Oh, good look, but couldn't quite get it to Taylor. Instead, it's Kavanaugh. What a save. <laughs> Unbelievable. At first, McNaney couldn't find it. Then he found it at the doorstep right on his heels and was able to pick it up. Now to your point, McDaney with a purpose, trying to get the ball upfield. Again, another turnover picked up by Faison, caused by a bad pass, and then Pat Cavanaugh being at the right place at the right time, right at midfield. 13 turnovers all in this first half for Maryland. Seven to five, clock ticking toward two minutes to go in this first half. Very entertaining first half of lacrosse, big time bounce back for the Irish after losing last week. Maryland, meanwhile, they continue their early season gauntlet of tough games. McLean shoots wide. Every game Maryland has played this year has been a tough outing, and today, no different on the road here in South Bend. And look, they're hanging around, down two, right? At 7-3, we thought this game was kind of getting away from them. Right, a little bit of a run here. Face on, tried the question mark, now help comes. Thompson with the shorty. Shoots right-handed, McNaney steers it aside. It's incredible to see that Faison's getting the long pole as a freshman, and you're running on a unit with a first-team All-American who's getting a short stick. Right. And we've seen Dobson take a couple of shots with the right hand. I think if he buries one of those, that, that may change it, right? Don't you think? I mean, look, they're giving him that right side. But he can also open up his passing game. You saw him with an assist to McLean. They're going to slide early to him when he has a shorty. Kavanaugh up top. Tries to get to the middle of the field, but zaps all over him. They're quick to go on the double team with Kavanaugh, that's for sure. Now, yeah, here I we would go. go that quick when you have zap. Dobson. He's got a ball on his left against the shorty. Now Faison takes that extra step, but can't get a good angle. Still 15 to shoot. That is a tough shot right there. And the flag comes out. McLean. All he needed was an inch, Clark, and he took advantage. You look at his game over the years at Brown. Because of COVID in 2021, the Ivy not playing. 2022, one of the leaders in goals per game nationally for Brown because of his awareness and ability to smell the back of the net and take a hit by Shala right there. That was just a big time. So it's one minute, illegal body check to the head. That can go up to two and even three if they think it's egregious. Direct contact to the head can cost you more than one after the review. But going back to McLean, he's got three goals here today, and he's done it in a variety of ways. He also has that assist on the first goal to Taylor. He's been the most consistent factor in this Notre Dame offense today. Going behind, mind you, he was an attackman while he was at Brown, now playing midfield, he clearly gets rocked here. I don't know how high it is, though. I mean, I no. guess the side of the no, helmet, I, yeah. I, you know, he I think the, the shoulder, whiplash but... of the head because right. of the the check, I don't think it was helmet to helmet. It's definitely not crown of the helmet, but because he went in with the shoulder, he may have gotten the, kind of the side of the helmet to the side of the helmet. I think one minute is probably right here, Card. I think one minute's right, too. Maybe a tick late. But or... you also have to keep in mind, Cotter, like, Schaller, in terms of pure muscle and strength, is, is bigger than McLean, right? So when he hits him, even if he hits him in that upper chest area, yeah. the natural reaction is, is the whiplash of the head that can right. cause a ref to think it, it, it could be a direct. That's why they're reviewing it to see. I don't think this should be more than one minute. I remember talking to Tills earlier in the season. He said Schaller's one of those guys that 
He's so physical. He's got two penalties. Yeah, right. he just gets he gets penalties all the time without really being malicious about it. Now the officials discussing it with our two coaches. to one minute releasable not non-releasable so i think that's the right call it's the right call unequivocally it's they the looked right at call. it made the right call so notre dame man up in the final minute of this first half you know the review could have created a situation where that could have been as much as two minutes unreleasable so they got the right call there Richard Deli, zero, man up specialist for the Irish. He'll camp out right there on the doorstep. Pick your poison if you're Maryland. Is it inside or outside that you're going to defend more? Kavanaugh, now to the far side to his brother Chris. Threatens a shot, gets it over to Thompson. Can't handle it initially, but tracks it down. 25 seconds left in this first half. Just a thing of beauty, isn't it? 13 inside. There isn't a whole lot of room in there, but he doesn't need a whole lot of room. There's different rules for different players. If this is an ordinary inside guy, you probably don't throw it to him. When it's Jake Taylor, the rules don't apply. Because you almost have a sense and a confidence if you're Pat Kavanaugh that he's never really covered. He just flashes the stick in front of his face cross his body, anticipating where to catch the ball away from the pressure. If he catches that on his right shoulder, there's a trail check there. Jake Taylor knows by putting the stick across his face, if he catches there, he then takes away the pressure of the backside defender. Still time to make something happen here. Loose ball push. Can Maryland get a good shot off? Molliver attacks the cage. He does get a shot off. And Ensimen is forced to make the save outside, which he does. A few words spoken. No harm, no foul, as the horn sounds to end the first half. But the Terps hanging tough on the road. They trail by four at the break. Four in a row at the end of that first half, so that bodes well for Weirman and company as we start the second half with the ball. Scooting all the way inside the restraining box and the Irish taking possession. You're going to let Weirman kind of just get into a groove. He's taken every face off this season other than two. So you're going to ride or die with, with 52 in red, a first team All American and the top face off man in the country in 2022. He's the Terps' all time leader in terms of wins at the X. He will adjust. And he'll give you productive play down the stretch. What do you think Maryland needs to do offensively? I know Notre Dame's got the ball right now, but when you think about what they need to do here in the second half that they weren't able to do. I think some transition. We've seen some opportunities for them as Taylor gets another one here. Ooh, great look. It hits the pipe. That ball had a lot of heat on it. We've seen some short stick defensive midfielders. Because of the, the ride of Notre Dame, I think that if you get the ball out quickly, you could have some unsettled situations, but you're going to ask your short stick defensive midfielders, guys like Kohler, to have to step down yes. and make some plays. I think you're going to have to see a goal or two from that unit delayed, to be in this game. Delayed call against Notre Dame, so this could help Maryland get some momentum here in the early part of the second half. Syracusa. Back over to Spanos. Maryland subbing a long pole out. Chorus, full head of steam. Watch out here. He tried to feed that in, and Napolitano with another great job in the passing lane. He's been awesome. Yeah. 30 and White has had his stick in the exact right spot now. In the late stages of the second quarter, as the third quarter opens up, I mean, in terms of his body positioning and his stick, perfection. 
Irish were two for two man up in the first half. Maryland, this will be their first opportunity. Now they're going to wave the flag off, so it won't be their first opportunity. Never mind. I didn't see where the, the flag came way ahead of the play. So we didn't see what they were even no, thinking of. No. That is an inadvertent foul, okay? By rule, when the flag hit the ground, it was inadvertent. That ball stays where it is in the alley. So, was mine, bro. I'm good. so our officials, P.J. Colello, Robert Ritchie, and Keith Glock have done a nice job today in this game inadvertently on that play so the ruling is the ball stays right yeah. where it was when the flag came out and that's the right call because notre dame was kind of arguing a little bit because they picked the ball off it should be their ball but it's it's where the inadvertent foul because maryland was pushing it because yes. they thought they were going to have exactly. possession no matter right what play. so they cleaned it up they did the right thing 32 seconds to shoot Now the officials giving further explanation. Well, it looks like we're ready to go. You know, we talked about transition opportunities for Maryland. If they clear up their clearing, eight for 13, over 90% in the season, they're going to have some unsettled situations because the press ride of Notre Dame will create right. some openings downfield. I also think on a six-on-six -six situation, based on the question you're asking offensively, I think Braden Irks has got to go to the rack. Here he is. Pushed wide, then he loses his footing, gets it back. Maryland got a fresh 60 after that inadvertent whistle. So just to clean that up. And I like him in space. He's got a shorty now. Shoots. Ensman makes the save. Saw it all the way. He did. There's two or three in this game that I think when they watch the tape, they're going to talk about shot location. Offensive coordinator Mike Phipps and John Tillman will be on these guys for having the looks they want, but not closing the deal. Right, 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 right. Irish just get the clear to McLean. Now face on coming on the field. Alfini will check him. One of those Vermont transfers we talked about. Three of them on this Maryland team. Dobson. Been working on a shorty all game long. Shoots with that left. Just wide of the mark. They made him pay with the assist to Devin McLean. You could say it's a crazy strategy, but it's working. Zap comes around the pick, gets it back up to Dobson. Out of Chris Cavanaugh. Those 250s have been banging yeah. all game long. Canfield and Cavanaugh. Once again, physical play almost forces the turnover, but McLean goes up the ladder. Inside, behind the back, and Faison buries it. The football team goes wild on the burn. I thought they were going to bail at half. They're not abandoning their boy. They love it. He didn't just give them a G. He gave them some sweet music with this BTB. And Devin McClain now with three goals and two assists with an incredible pass to Jordan Faison, who catches it in one motion here. Look at that pass, the anticipation. That pass is crazy. Right to his stick. And he doesn't sit there and take that extra cradle he feels that front side pressure to bury it behind the back on McNaney look at the reaction here he knows they're still waiting around he wants to show his boys something he gave it to him he gives him the point count it You know, some of those old linemen of like, I've never seen any, anything like that. No, before. yeah, it was great. When Pat Cavanaugh scored behind the back, we saw one of the, like the, the, the linemen or linebackers kind of just show what a behind the back was. It was classic. Like, he's like yo, he just did this. Right. <laughs> some of those guys are like behind the back with a big sack of grain or something like that, you know? Look, when you think about it, you're a freshman. That's funny, Connor, big sack of grain. When you're a freshman, you come on this campus and you are the MVP of a bowl game. 
right? You came in as a, as a preferred walk-on. You weren't a scholarship football player until, until later on. You're the MVP of the ball game, and you're a starting midfielder for the defending national champs. Yeah. Like, like just sit there. Soak that in for a second, what kind of athlete this kid is. That's incredible. To come in and start as a true freshman for Notre Dame is on the lacrosse team is already an accomplishment yes. just in and of itself. The lacrosse IQ to play in the six-on-six six sets. It's not like, oh, you're going to play wings and you're faster than everyone. You're just going to get a ground ball and then you're running off the field. You're going to play offense and you're going to stick BTBs. With guys like this, Pat Cavanaugh. Gray. Trying to feed it inside. Look at that. A another play on Unsettled. And Pat Cavanaugh now, he tried to bounce it behind the back. Gray. <sighs> Boy, I mean, big hits too right in front. You see Zap getting into it with Taylor. Stays with Notre Dame. That's the unsettled situation. So unsettled, I had a hard time even following the ball. I would say if you were to track the second half, if they clear under 85%, they're not winning this game, Maryland. You, you are going to have to break this, this ride, and you're going to have to make them pay for the aggressive ride. And right now, it's clearly been in the favor of the Irish. Kavanaugh's working on a shorty here. You see the help comes. Someone's going to be open. Nice save by McNaney on Walker. And here comes Maryland out quick. Zapatello. He'll shoot. Rod by Entman. That's a great save. When, it, when a pole's coming down, Cotter, six feet. And here we go. Three on two. Kavanaugh to Kavanaugh. And McNaney makes the save. That was great end-to-end -end action. Two great saves from both these goaltenders. It was. Entman answers on a Zapatello shot. I was mentioning, when you have a six-foot pole, the leverage in the release is so different than a short stick. Entman gobbles that shot up right by his feet. And then McNaney with the one-on-one -on -one stop. These are the two best goalies in the entire country in college lacrosse for a reason. Murphy. You can see how he can get open, but that shot again. Again, gobbled up by Entman. Murphy's been shooting a lot of outside shots, and Entman's been seeing him. Stick side, too. Going to have to make him move and work the pipes. Nice job on the clear here, Parlett. Brings it into the offensive zone, gets it to Kavanaugh. You know, it's interesting with Murphy. He's very two-handed in terms of his standstill spot shots, but when he's moving his feet, he always likes to roll back to his right. Face on. Burlace is on him. Back over to Dobson again with the shorty on him. This time he got a little bit of room with that left. Opted not to shoot it. Got it to McLean, who also didn't have quite the shot he wanted. So the strategy here is short stick on Dobson, quick to go. Pull face on. So that's what Jesse Bernhardt's been doing in terms of the defensive strategy. Kohler almost got it. We'll get a loose ball push, though, and eventually it does go back to Maryland. Another test on the clear for the Terps. Got five seconds to get across that midfield line, and they do. Kohler. To 54 Stamos, the hero of the Syracuse game with the overtime winner. The unlikely hero. And now Chorus. Syracusa back to the middle of the field against the shorty. Spanos rolls to the middle. And it's a Maltz. Now works a back up top to Spanos. Good luck. Oh, Entman got a piece of it. And he comes out of there with it. These goalies are something. 
You almost have to shoot the ball perfectly to beat these two. I thought that was going to be a goal, no question. Finally picked up by Seymour in the offensive end to Pat Cavanaugh. Yeah, this defense from Maryland is going to be tested here. McNaney certainly holding his ground. Suddenly, Entzman has become just a brick wall. They've had a couple of really good looks and haven't been able to get it by him. And that all five wall, of their yeah. shots, I was going to say, all five of their shots in the second half have been on net, and Entzman stopped all of them. And that brick wall is giving this offense just a lot of opportunities against the Maryland defense. It's being asked to play a lot of reps right now. Still 22 to shoot for Kavanaugh. On the shorty, Angrick with an angry shot just off mark. Getting more minutes, angry 10 and white today. Got a lot of depth in the middle of the field, as we said earlier in the show. So Corrigan can move some shell pieces around and keep players fresh. The second midfield line here. Seymour, Gray, and Angry. Here's Pat. Using the pick to get the big little. Now he's on the shorty inside. Taylor tried to on the back as the shot clock sounded. That would have shocked me if that went in. You know, you talk about the fresh legs, and you have the the cast of characters back from a national championship run. You think of the Kavanaugh's, you think of Dobson, you think of Entman. There's been a few new faces that have been the difference in this game for Notre Dame. You have Devin McClain with three goals and two assists. Jordan Faison is making his presence felt. Pipe. Brennan. And then the freshman, Sean Light, who's been defending Bra Braden Erksa. Erksa's got zero goals, zero assists. So three new faces on a team with, with so much powerful star power all type over. Type of players, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's unbelievable that you're, you're bringing these guys now to a loaded roster, and you could argue that two of them might have been your most impactful players today in Sean Light blanketing Erksa. And Devin McLean with the three goals and two assists. Now Molliver comes off the pick, meaning he's got a shorty on him. As he comes up top, he dodges down the alley. Does get a step, but opts not to take the shot. Now he gets it to Irks, who also has a shorty. The help comes, and he can't split the double team. Ball still loose. Picked up by the Irish. Here comes Carter Parlett. He's telling his teammates to get in the hole. I'm pushing it. Loses it. Coming out of the box is a chance for Maryland. Parlett's gas, too, if he doesn't get off the field. He's getting caught right now. If I'm Maryland, I'm identifying that matchup. 21 just sprinted end to end. Daniel Kelly, 45 in red, has him. I would go after 21 in white. He just ran full yeah, field after picking up that ground ball. And now full field all the way back. Chorus gets to the middle of the field. Got his hands free for a moment. Out to the near side to Stobaugh. Stobaugh shoots. Entenman gobbles it up. And he quickly outlets it. Kavanaugh meets it in midfield. Now he makes the turn to the offensive end. Stobaugh shot offside, hip. Remember I said that's where you need to shoot on Entman? Well, that's not working either. Go to plan, what are we down to now? Like plan H? Tackle him when he gets out of the cage? I don't know. 11 saves on the game, six in the third quarter for Entman. Face on, he's feeling it. Shoots, scores on the run! Usher can't even control the football team over on the berm. Pulling him. Yeah. Maryland's pulling him. And that, that's a great point. On the surface, you think, like, how do you not pull Eric Dobson? Are you nuts? He's a first-team All-American. He'll be a first-round draft pick in the PLL this spring. If you watch the game, 
and you see what he does and how dynamic he is, you scratch your head, you say you have to pull this football player who's a freshman who's playing lacrosse. But if you really dissect his skill set and how good he is, it makes sense. Maryland's got to get Tannen Red going. Erksa, it's been a goose egg for him so far today. Of course, he scores easily. Just weaved his way through the defense, and Ensman had no shot at that one. Maryland had to have that. You're watching Liam Entman take this game over, and like a perfect shot has to be landed to hit the back of the net. Jack Chorus takes his time, locates the net in the body location, and how low Entman gets. You saw him bending, right? His right knee was on the turf. And Chorus patiently waits. And where does he hit Entman? Right below the crossbar. That's probably Maryland's most valuable player outside of McNaney and Zapatello. I think he's the third best player on this team, Jack Chorus. Hagstrom giving Lynch a break. And Weirman takes advantage, wins the faceoff. Now he wants to get rid of it, and does to Chorus. Now Chorus wants to get rid of it here with Erksa. Maryland will sub out. Maltz. I feel like Irks has struggled today dodging because he, he's finding all the pressure in the slides. He's almost dodging into the heart of this defense. I'd like to see Maryland kind of use him in space, maybe send a pick far out in terms of open turf area so you get his jets moving. Spanos. Comes upfield, doesn't have a good angle though. Syracuse shoots, Entman goes down to make that save. Another one for the All-American. Give him 12 on the day. You look at this midfield. We talked about Dobson and and face on. Then you have Devin McLean too. The three goals and two assists. The consistency and his ability to kind of plug in holes in terms of what you want in, in certain scenarios. Two-time All Ivy, former team captain in his days at Brown. Comes from a lacrosse family. Dad, brothers. The IQ off the charts for McLean. He's got a pole on him right now, but he, he never had a short stick on him when he was at Brown, and he's going to have a short stick on him a lot at Notre Dame this year, and I intend on him feasting. Face on, showing the short distance quickness. And it's not just the short stick in space dodging too. When you're that smart of a player, you take a short stick inside, you can play games, and you can make it really difficult for them to play off ball. Kavanaugh trying to get it to his brother. This gets a midfield. No, Kavanaugh prevents it, so you don't get the over and back. Maryland wasn't able to get possession, but the shot clock is going to wind down. Now they do. You know, they're fighting for ground balls. And I think Eamon McEnany with City Lacks, as long as one of the Kavanaugh's <laughs> picks up that ground ball, right? It was it was Pat right. and it was Chris oh, fighting yeah. for that ground ball. $10 for every ground ball either one of the Kavanaugh's pick up. They're donating to City Lacks. Well, that one might have gotten through a full that's been a little but it's wide in the cage as the horn sounds to end the third quarter Eventhal and his group and what Eamon's doing at City Lacks the work is never done work obviously not done here for either one of these teams but it's a much better position for Notre Dame to be in right now with a five goal lead heading to the fourth you know you, you look at the Kavanaugh's in their production not their typical point explosion obviously heightened awareness in terms of the scouting report and forcing offense from different areas if you're Maryland. And that's been the midfield with Jordan Faison and Devin McLean. How about Faison and Eric Dobson, both Floridians. We talk about growing the game, and you see stars from all over the country no on rosters right now. It's just great to see. There's so many outstanding coaches and volunteers in all of these areas around the country that yeah. lets this game grow the way that it should. This guy right here with the ball, this is this is Georgia against California. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, Oliver from Georgia, Irksa from Georgia. 
Ramsey, California, who's guarding Maliver. That's great stuff, yeah. Both these teams very emblematic of the growth of the game. 12 to shoot for Maliver and company. Now he swims, but Ramsey's all over him. Jump shot, bounces it. Ensman saw it, got a piece of it, directed it behind the cage, and then the second shot goes wanting. Ramsey comes out of there with it. You know, Entman has this low base, right? He's wide, so he, he makes those bounce shots kind of near his feet look so easy. He's crouched down because he's, as big as he is, he's not like making this big swooping motion because he gets so low for a big guy. You know what it's like? It's like a catcher in baseball going down to, to get a pitch that hits yeah. in front of the plate and letting it go low to high. It's a great like, analogy. Let, let it just hit yep. my no, chest that's, protector that's a great analogy. And, and go low to high on it. How about that rivalry? Syracuse Hopkins next Saturday. That, that's a huge game for Syracuse. Oh. And the ACC. Yes, got to get a big win because Hopkins is getting all kinds of big wins right now. Everyone's all nervous ACC fans in terms of what happened the last week. I've, I've said there's some meat on the bone still. Out of conference tilts, and that's one that kind of headlines it if you're the ACC. Chris trying to get under his defender. He does it, scoops it in. They're going to wave it off, though. They're going to say he stepped in the crease before he got rid of that shot. I, I will say right off the bat, the goal mouth is not in play here, right? Because he lands. I, I don't know if this is the right call. The goal mouth's not in play here. He does not fall on the goal mouth because right. he falls behind the goal line. Right, the crease violation. Is the, crease, called. Is the crease in play here? I, I don't think so. Oh, I, I don't like wow, that. Wow, that's a goal. That should be a that's goal. That's a goal. That is flat out a goal. That's an amazing goal, too. Yeah, that's an amazing goal, is right. Kevin Corrigan knows. He throws the challenge flag. When you have your body moving towards the back of the net and behind the goal mouth, that's why that was easy for me, Cotter. The goal mouth is always the tricky piece of the equation. So we just got the official word. The call on the field stands. I'm surprised about that, but the officials in review obviously decided they didn't have enough to overturn what was initially called in the crease, a crease violation against Chris Kavanaugh. That foot is not in the crease. He's airborne. That's a goal. Now he lands in the crease, but not in the goal mouth. But I heard the ref kind of in and out with his microphone mention interference. Whether there was some type of interference away from the play, I mean, he's not in the crease, Connor, and he doesn't land in the goal mouth. So in terms of just that sheer play. Yeah, I didn't see it. That's You're a goal. Right. There must be something out off, off ball, I guess. But I did hear the ref say the word interference, but we didn't get it cleanly. And, and clearly, uh, Coach Corrigan hasn't gotten it cleanly enough as he is... That it, 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 Logan McEnany's stick was contacted with? Is that what? Yeah, that's what we're getting. Okay. So we're I didn't see it, it on the replay. We're getting that there was contact made on the goaltender. Yes. Yep. So Maryland gets a break there, and they're going to see if they can take advantage of it. Here's here. the deal. You have the goal mount to protect the goalie. If a, if a player is launching away from the goal and lands away from the goal mouth and he hits the goalie stick they're saying that's the interference right i, I don't like that. with McEnany in the goal because mouth. he's clearly not in physical harm right if he's launching himself away from the goal and doesn't land in the goal mouth if he hits the goalie stick is the goalie's health in jeopardy there no but by rule isn't that interference yes by yes. rule yes. I, i'm telling you i just don't like you don't it. like that rule because it's the, the goal mouth is there to protect the goals. If it was up to me, there'd be no goal mouth, and we would have goals being judged in terms of landing in the crease just like the PLL does it, right? You land in the crease after the ball crosses the goal line, it's a goal. If you land in the crease before it crosses the goal line, it's not a goal. That's how the PLL does it. It's nice and clean, it's easy. College lacrosse feels like they need to protect the goalies more. In all the years, back in the day, that people were launching into the crease. I don't know off the top of my mind a goalie that was injured because of that. Maybe there was. Right. But in that case, you have the goal mouth. You don't land in the goal mouth. You're not in direct 
contact physically with the goalie and you hit his stick and it's a no goal? I, I don't know. Spanos and Maryland looking to take advantage. They get one back here. He's their best shooter, Eric Spanos. Shoot 58% after a career day last week against Princeton. He's a chameleon in the offense. He was an attackman in high school, but you can put him anywhere on the offensive set. A natural righty on the top left goes to his strength away from the defensive pressure. And finally, they can solve Liam Entman outside of eight to 10 yards. Weirman's gonna have to take this game over here the rest of the way. That's a good start against Angstrom. Spanos gets it back. You no, know, Weirman could go on a run too, right? I mean, he's gonna have to. Will Lynch has been spectacular heading into this contest. 67%, that's a career high right now for him. But Weirman's a different beast. He can reel off face-off win after face-off win. It's one of the reasons they beat Syracuse in the Dome, his fourth quarter face-off play. Stobaugh. Going back to Maltz. Who's Molliver on the far side? One against the shorty. job getting physical with him yeah that's good defense that is good hunkering down okay there. found spanos in front though camp right on the doorstep really good look from oliver that's two in a row for maryland eric Molliver was trained by the great late john zilberti national attackman of the year for syracuse in 1989 so Purdy lived in Georgia, took the young buck under his wings and taught him the game. One of those aspects, patience. He manipulates the defense right now. He's on a short stick, so he knows the eyes and the pressure will be all towards him to support that matchup. He doesn't beat Ramsey, but he does enough to draw the defense to him. And the eyes and the technical approach with the quick pass from the ear finds Spanos, who has the last two goals, one with time and room righty, one inside lefty. Lynch is back out there and wins a big face-off for the Irish. Things tightening up here in South Bend. Think about it, a five-goal advantage with possibly a sixth with yes. that Chris Cavanaugh goal that wasn't allowed is now all of a sudden down to three. And renewed vigor for the Terps. Hassan will take the air out of it a little bit and slow things down. Dobson on the move. Back up top, face on the extra pass to Chris Kavanaugh. Fakes the shot once and then scores! Piped it in for number two on the day. speed he loses his angle the awareness of a shooter knowing where he is in terms of shot location and where the goal and the goalie is that is critical and that's why he's a proven goal scorer loose ball trip on the face off possession to the Irish lead back up to four the beauty of the way that this game has been you feel like this first midfield's rested enough to take most of the shifts down the stretch Right? They haven't been caught on defense. I haven't recalled 14 or 8 running on the other side. We've been getting them off, so that allows them to get deep into the fourth quarter with their top six here if you're Notre Dame. 
Mason uses it. Are we going to push in the back? Yeah, that's going to be a push in the back. That time the pick worked with Dobson. Faison got to the goal. It's going to be a man up situation for the Irish. Yeah, this is an extra man unit that's been clicking on all cylinders this season and today, no exception. They got all the pieces. When you put together an extra man unit in a lab, you want outside hammers. You got a lefty in Dobson, a righty in Chris Cowell. We got red, you want a passer. All right. Push with possession, 30 seconds. Got a passer in Pat Cavanaugh, 51 in white. And you have the inside presence of Jake Taylor and Jeffrey Richardelli. You checked every box, Connor. Yeah, they checked every box to perfection today. Two for two, man up. Both goals come from Jake Taylor on a feed from Pat Cavanaugh. Giving him a lot of room. Dobson, what about stepping down? They're giving him room because they're so concerned about the inside. That's where they've been beaten today. Dobson couldn't handle the pass. Big hit. McLean comes out of there with it. Now he loses his stick. Thanks to Zapatello, makes another check. McLean got his stick back and got the ball back. Three takeaways by Zapatello on one play. This kid's the Terminator. Still fighting for it. The officials didn't get a good look at it. Both Pat and Chris say it went off the zap. The officials are going to talk things over. Stick, lost the ball, got his stick back, and got the ball back. Now look at these these attackmen. Dangerous. Got made it work for him. Now they may have an advantage. Kaufman opts not to attack the cage. Instead, he'll wait for substitutions to come out. Good to see 28 in red. We've seen 8 and 28. Two D middies who've been banged up for Maryland getting playing time today. Chorus on the run. Good matchup with Ramsey, even though it's a shorty on shorty. Ramsey's been tough. Erksa hits the pipe. Battle for the ball, won by the Irish. Birdmaster got there first. Yeah, he was closer to the ball when it went out of bounds on the shot. Erksa was closer to the sideline. Not the ball. That's a good call. hensman has got 10 seconds to clear it. Looking for some help. He'll take it himself. Get it across the midfield line. Now it's a dangerous situation. Still keeps possession. Big time play by Entman. I thought Corrigan was going to call a timeout when it went in the box with Entman. Instead, you had Coach Tillman get in the, uh, down to midfield and alert the officials about an offside, which they called. So that was the turnover, how Maryland got it back. But now Faison gets it back for the Irish. Watch out here. Gets it to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, with all that experience, says we got a four-goal lead here. Clock winding down inside of six. Take a little air out of it a bit. Helter Skelter these last couple of minutes usually favors Notre Dame. Taylor, that shot didn't get through. That ball got stuck inside the jersey or the shoulder pads of Colin Burlace. That didn't feel good. 
I, I felt that up here. Yeah. Right in the collarbone there. And then the, I think the, the ball gets stuck in there, or is he just hurt? The way he was grabbing yeah, he, it. Look where he's, he's pointing. That's yeah. one tough customer. That hit him right in the neck. And you could hear it hit him in the neck. Let's take another look at it. Yeah, he soaks this one. Trying to see if it got through to McNaney. No, it stayed in his jersey, yeah. yeah. Hit him in the neck and he kept it in his jersey. He's got to have traps like you to get the ball caught there, right? He just soaked that Burles. up. Yeah. His, his dad, Brian Burleys, was a first team All American in the early 90s at the University of Maryland. One of the bad boys for. Coach Dick Adele, who, who brought it every single game. They called him Bubba. Heck of a player. And his brother BJ, now grad student at Notre Dame, playing on the Irish lacrosse team. So this is a big day for the Burleys. Unforced error that time. As Dobson throws it away under pressure. Maryland has got to be taken advantage. They've got to be nearly perfect now in the remaining five minutes of this game. Every possession is huge. The issue is you just feel like they've kind of been bottled up in the half-field offense. This Notre Dame defense with their slides and the timing. Ryan Wellner's unit has played spectacular. Spanos on Parlet. Inside. Chorus just too high. Tried to just one-time it. He had Entenmann, because Entenmann was going from one pipe to the other and out of position. You can hear the groans from the Maryland fans here. They knew that was a great opportunity. Still got possession, though, and time to shoot. Erksa on the shorty. Help comes. Now he rolls back to his left. Nothing doing. Oliver scores! That trick from Oliver. Keeping the Terps in it. And when you've got Luke Weirman, you're always in it. Lynch has been up to the task today. Weirman's going to have to be dominant with every faceoff he takes the rest of the way. I think molliver has been great today. He's got the three goals. He has the assist in the fourth quarter. This is a kid who's coming off a, a missed season in 2023 when he, he tore his knee up. It's just a matter of time you get your footing back. You get your confidence. And this is a player with a wealth of experience. He was a regular in the... 2021 team that went to the championship game one of the top scorers in 2022 when they won it all if you get Maliver back you get him playing at the level he's capable of which is today we've seen kind of changes everything and it, it takes some pressure off of Urza. Lynch big win on that face off we're even 12 apiece on the day so Lynch is holding his own with Weirman and winning big fourth quarter face offs Oliver's been the only one who's kind of been able to solve Entman with any consistency from outside. He's beat him now twice stick side when no one else has. Gray on the second midfield unit. Kavanaugh back to his brother Pat. Notre Dame in no hurry here. Pat though gets a step though. Gets to the middle of the field and bounces it high. Takes a huge hit from Zapatello. That's going to bring a flag. He got hammered here. I don't think it was Zapatello. Was it McDonald's? It was, yeah, it was McDonald's McDonald on the McDonald's slide. He right was able to get a step on Zapatello. Let's take a look at it. He gets hammered here. This is it's completely blown up. Makes the move. Yeah, this is late. Yeah, late for McDonald's. It, there's, no, there's no question that's late. It looked worse in terms of getting him higher and from the front. Plus, it was, I mean, he just targeted him, left his feet, too. In football, that's yeah, that's the targeting right there. You're leaving your feet with bad intentions late. That's a no-brainer. Maryland now, that's their fourth penalty so far. Notre Dame's been two for three on the man up before him. Real time, I was worried about the head a little bit, but when you see it in replay, he gets him from the side and the back. Looks like Pat Cavanaugh will be okay, but he's going to do some time, and it might be more than a minute. Let's get the call from the officials. Number 51, unnecessary rough, this late hit. One man, three sets of 69. 
one minute with only three plus minutes to go in this game. That's big. Yeah, and he's he's still in the game though, Pat Cab. You yeah. talk about a tough kid, man. Like he's well, I mean, championship weekend last last year was legendary. Played with one hamstring and a busted shoulder. No one really even knew about the busted shoulder until the fall when he was on the Pat McAfee show. Right. He's in a sling. And then I think like, I thought it was your 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 hamstring. You had one hamstring. They reattached it right with like that right. that apparatus. Rubber band. Yeah. And then Chris's face was a crimson mask, like a professional wrestler. Dobson. I thought he might unleash it there. Must He's step into one. Yeah. Inside, Richard Daly scores. Patented, patented move by Zero and White. We talk about Jake Taylor, the telestration of the twister and the inside finish and manipulating a defense and a goalie with the inability to track a shot. Watch how he catches this ball and how he finishes it. This is about as high level of an inside finish as you will find. Look at that. Catches it, kind of handcuffed, right? They jam it inside, so he's handcuffed. He still catches it, but he has the wherewithal then to bring the stick across his body so his angle is not decreased, and he sticks it on McNaney. That, that, is, that is a fantastic finish by the man-up specialist. Zero and white. Had two man-up goals last week against Georgetown. Picks up another one today. High school teammate of Chris Cavanaugh up at Taft. Brother Thomas is one of the backup goalies who's got a tremendous upside. A couple years ago, he was the number one ranked goalie in the country. And he'll be in a battle next year when it comes to Liam Entman's replacement with Alex Zeff. I mean, that that Zeff. is going to be a battle. You know, like when college football team loses a legendary quarterback and then all eyes the following year on who his replacement right. will be. That's what it will be at Notre Dame. Will it be Alex Zeff or will it be Thomas Richardelli? Two elite goalies waiting for that opportunity. Zeff's been around a while too, waiting in the wings. Nice play. Picking that one off. Burlace, good to see he's all right after taking that lacrosse ball in the neck just moments ago. Now desperate times for Maryland. Clock Winding down to two minutes, down four. Kohler brings it in to the offensive end. Bolivar. Maryland's got to get one quickly here. Brennan coming up field, doesn't have an angle. Tried to find a player cutting, couldn't. That was Whittier. Now Brennan gets it back. Oliver's got his defender hung up. Spins in front. Shoots. Paid the price for it as well and couldn't get it past Ensimit. Now Napolitano tracks it down. The Irish are feeling it here and the crowd in our lot is feeling it as well. Big hit in the middle of the field. Loose ball. That was high on Zapatello. Not called. That should have been called. That was a high hit on Zapatello, who's hanging around the middle of the field, making a play. One in red got hit late and high. Well, the ACC answered, Connor. Looked like the walls were caving in a few days ago. I told you and John Kettering, our producer, there's meat on the bone. Today, there was a lot of meat on the bone for Notre Dame yeah. against a Big Ten juggernaut in Maryland. They win. They took the meat off that bone. Yep. I'm UNC beats Penn today. Duke, Duke beats, beats Princeton. Princeton today. Army got a battle from Lafayette as well. They were able to get the win. How about the job Coach Alvarisi has done with Army? Yeah, and Pat Myers at Lafayette, who's turned that program around yes. to be able to compete against top five teams. Face on. Will he get an extra? He will in the open net. What a day for Jordan Face on. His football teammates came out. They've been big supporters of this lacrosse team over the last couple of years, and they got a treat today. 14 and white, their teammate in the fall. 
with a huge game, his second hat trick, and the Irish on their way to the dub. First midfielder since the year 2000 to score three goals in his debut. He did that against Cleveland State. Well, he matches that today against a top five team in the country. While his fall mates are watching him dominate, why would you leave at half when it's one of the nicest days you will see in early March in South Bend? Shirts off. Right, you better be breaking out the SPF. Those guys have yeah. been... Berm is packed. Winter wear for the last six months, and now it's bright spring sunshine in South Bend, Indiana, and the sun is shining on the Irish today. Horn sounds to finish it off. The Irish bounce back from their first loss of the season last week here at home.